Hi everyone, Thomas Magnuson, Director of Praise and Discipleship here, and wanted to continue this uh, series of Holy Week readings. This is coming from Matthew 25 in verse 1, and to give some context for this, this is after Jesus leaves the temple, and his disciples say, look at these beautiful buildings, and Jesus says, yeah, but I, here's the thing, I tell you, not one stone is going to be left on top of another at the coming of the Lord. Right, And so then this begets all sorts of questions about the end times. And so he's teaching on the end times and what this is going to look like specifically. But then he comes to this, Matthew 25, where he gives the practical application. Keep in mind, this is Jesus teaching, knowing full well in a couple of days, he's going to face the cross, the wrath of the Father at Golgotha. And then he's going to die and be buried and then three days later resurrect from the grave. It's important to keep that in mind as Jesus is teaching these things. Matthew 25 says this, this is a parable. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil for their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. And at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, since there will be not enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So Jesus is making this analogy to the kingdom of heaven, this parable to describe what the kingdom of heaven will actually look like and what it means to actually enter into it. He's done this several times already. And it's so cool that he uses this imagery because the imagery of a wedding feast and of a marriage shows up all throughout the Old and New Testament between God and his people. Jesus is considered the bridegroom and the church is considered the bride. Now in Jewish culture, what typically would happen is that the ceremony would happen at the house of the bride and then the groom and his party would go and leave and prepare a place and prepare a party and then come back, announce themselves very grandiose and wonderful and beautiful and say, come with me, we're going to go party in my place, right? And they would have a, a marriage feast there and it usually would happen at night. Now Jesus is using this analogy, something they understood to tell them something very important. It's both a warning and an encouragement. If we look to the unwise virgins, the, those who, well, I bet he's going to come soon. And, you know, it'll just, whenever it's opportune, I'll make sure that I have my lamp lit. Versus the ones who said, no, he could come at any time. And I want to make sure I'm ready absolutely no matter what. There was the key difference is being ready. There's another analogy here too, as we're talking about lanterns or lamps. You see, whenever the bridegroom came, well, the virgins who were ready were able to see their way and go with the groom. But those who weren't, they were walking in darkness and ultimately missed the opportunity to be a part of the marriage supper. Now, what does this mean for us? You see, after Jesus teaches on the end times, he comes to this, saying that we must always be ready it's both an encouragement and a warning. A warning in the sense that, well, if I am not fully living for Christ, if I have not trusted Christ to fill my lamp with oil, to give me his righteousness, then I'm not actually going to be able to enter into that marriage supper of the Lamb, that wedding feast. Because Christianity isn't just about being opportunists, right? It's a life-altering, being born again, experience, and life that we receive from him. It's new life. And this is one of the reasons Jesus used this analogy. Because it's one thing for me to say that, yeah, I'm a part of the, the you know, the wedding party. But if I'm not ready to go whenever I'm supposed to, whenever the bridegroom is ready, I'm not going to be able to participate. It's one thing for us to simply associate ourselves. It's another thing to actually trust and be ready and waiting for him because we are so excited for his return. 
And all it takes is this, friends, if you have not done this, going to him and asking him for the oil to fill your lamp. Or in other words, going to him and saying, I am a sinner in need of grace. I repent and turn from my sin and trust you, Jesus. Would you change my life? Would you make me born again? I will follow you and always be ready. Here's the encouragement. The encouragement for us Christians is that we're being invited to a party like we have never, ever seen or experienced. I want you to think about this. Jesus himself describes who he is as the groom and the church as the bride. And in the book of Revelation, as Tim is going to teach on soon, we see this marriage supper of the lamb that is described. We will get to see our Lord face to face. And not only that, be a part of a humongous party of brothers and sisters from every tribe, tongue, and nation who have trusted Christ. And it's going to be an amazing time. Be ready then. Always let your light shine. Jesus said that he is the light of the world. He described us as the church as the light of the world too. Well, where does our light come from? Him. Here's the encouragement for today, this Holy Week. Even whenever things seem dark, even whenever Good Fridays happen, go to him and ask him for oil for your lamp. Ask him to make you a light in all of these situations. Ask him to go before you so that you know which way to walk and always be expecting him to come and be excited for it. I know I am. And I'm excited to see many of you there at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Whenever that happens, however it happens, I will just be excited to be with the Lord and to be with the church. Have a great day, church. I look forward to seeing you at Good Friday service this Friday, 630. And then at our resurrection services at 845 and 1030 on Sunday. Both... Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday can be accessed online. For more information, please go to our website, our Facebook, or our Instagram. We'll have everything there for you. Have a great day.